guys, how's it going? We're down at the garden center today. They're actually closed, so we're here all by ourselves, which is so awesome to give you a houseplant tour. So I came down the other day and I helped receive this massive load of houseplants. I think it was a little over 2,000 altogether plants, which is huge for us. That's a lot of plants to fit in this store. And we worked hard. We worked all day long to where at the end of the day, I gave you a tour of what it looked like, but there was still so much to do that I said that we would come back down once they were all done getting it set and take a walk through. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to do a little bit of shopping because I didn't even take anything home that day, which is really surprising. We were just working so hard and trying to get so much done. So this is the front of the store. Um, like I'm standing right inside the front door. So you can see the front counter with the seed bins back there. And I just want to go display by display and talk about what we're seeing here. Starting with these absolutely gorgeous and Anthuriums. So some of these plants look almost fake to me. Like these look like they belong on a Willy Wonka set. Like I should be able to pick these and eat them and expect something really sweet like candy. <laughs> it's kind of what they look like to me. But I love all the colors. There's this beautiful kind of purple pink, which I've not seen before. I think that's a really unique color. And there's bright white, which are really beautiful. And tucked in in between each one of them, there is a burgundy uh, ficus which these are nice. Look at these, six inch plant. They're huge, really beautiful. And then right up above here, there's some Audrey uh, ficus. These were actually here, part of the last house plant load, but you can see that they're happy. They're putting on brand new growth, which looks really good. And as we swing to the back of this, this display, you'll see that it kind of goes from Anthurium ficus to Diffenbachia, which the variety, I'm not sure there's an actual name to variety on here. Maybe let me check one more, just in case. Nope, some of these didn't have tags, so I don't know exact names, but these are fairly common, but these are gorgeous. Especially if you have dark colored walls, I think that these would show up and shine so well, and these are really easy plants to take care of. Uh, and there's also some Dracaenas. These are Dracaena magenta right here, which look really good up against the boldness of the Diffenbachia, but I like the green with that burgundy margin along the leaf. I think that is really pretty. Look at these though. Look at these elephant ears. They're massive. They're absolutely enormous and beautiful. And everything was clean. So part of, of receiving a house plant load is one getting them all out of their boxes. They're all shipped on boxes for the most part. Um, and so that takes a lot of time. And then we have to groom and inspect each plant for bugs. Um, occasionally, we'll get a load that has a plant or two that have bugs on them. This one was 100% clean. Not a single bug on anything, which is amazing, but that does take time. And then you have to move stuff around in displays that are already here, uh, put saucers out, get them all priced and organized. And uh, so it's a process, but oh, I had such a good time. It's a, like, I don't know what it does. In fact, I'm gonna be spending more time down here this spring, but it fills me up to be working with plants in that capacity again. Um, beautiful alocasias right up here. These are called Bambino. So I'm guessing that these stay a little bit smaller. They do have a smaller leaf structure than another variety of alocasia we have in the back. But aren't these unique looking? I'm like zebra stripe. They look very tropical and unlike anything that we can grow outside here anyway. Calathea called Ornata. I'm gonna show you another area where we've got these and there's a whole bunch of them all together. These are another one that kind of have a fake look to me, like that dark glossy green with the perfect pink stripes. And you can see our peacock display still going strong up there. The plants are doing well. So that's been a fun change and a little bit more color up there. Uh, right here, beautiful Chef Lara's called Alpine Junior. Don't those look so nice? Like they showed up looking like this, all glossy, nothing was water spot. You know, sometimes uh, if a grower has hard water and waters from overhead, you'll get things that kind of have a dusty white like spots all over on the top of them that are incredibly hard to remove. These are all so <laughs> pristine. <sighs> I might wanna have one of these for home. Uh, there are some Rex begonias that are gorgeous. This one may come home with us as well <laughs> today. Beautiful color. So this one was an assortment. You can see that these two are different. And then this one, I love, love, love. Look at the dark leaves with the silver specks. They just call these all Rex begonias. They aren't individually named like by variety. They're gorgeous. Right down here, there's a couple of philodendrons called Zandu. There's also one in the back called Little Hope that I really like. 
these have kind of that real pretty ruffly edge there. Just a nice, I'm not sure how big these get. I've not grown one of this variety myself, but they seem like they're a little bit more compact than some of the other philodendrons you can get. So kind of nice maybe for a smaller space. In fact, there's a whole bunch more right here. You can see kind of ringing the edge here. There's some burgundy uh, ficus, huge. Look at the new growth. Isn't that pretty, that red? These leaves are just beautiful. These do really well in my house, <laughs> these type of ficus, um, in areas that like are kind of like this, bright, but not necessarily direct light right on the plant. Bromel bromeliads, you'll see these kind of scattered through this whole display. There's some yellow orange ones, a very tropical looking uh, red right here. I did post a picture of a box full of these San Marino peperomias. They are like, they are the picture of perfection to me. And if you look kind of inside the plant, you can see the pink stems, pink undersides of the leaves. They are so pretty. Uh, some bird nest ferns, there's a couple different varieties. This one looks to be, they're not individually labeled. This one looks like a Chrissy. I'm not sure. I mean, you guys might be able to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a different type of bird nest that has a longer leaf. It still has kind of the crest at the top, but you can definitely tell a difference in the growth habit of these two, but bird's nest ferns are typically a really easy fern to take care of. They don't require, for me, it seems like, in my experience, they don't need quite the humidity that a, you know, Boston fern or a Aryan fern or a Kimberly queen fern need. Um, so they withstand conditions in our dry climate a lot better so far up to this date. Uh, right here, there are some peperomia. Variety is red margin. See a little bit of red on the stem and a tiny red margin around the leaf. Very delicate red margin there. Lots of different peperomias in this lotus. So fun. Huge philodendron called Congo Rojo. We received two different sizes of this variety. This is the larger of the two. Huge leaves, red stems, really almost like rhubarb. They feel like rhubarb stems. We have some smaller ones in the back. And then if we go around front here, you will see some of the best looking Swiss cheese plants ever. Philodendron Swiss cheese. Looks like caterpillar came along a little bit. That's what I used to think. Now I appreciate the uniqueness of this plant. I feel like a lot of plants have I've come around to throughout the years just because of how different they are than so many other things. Uh, but I have heard that comment quite a bit about these that have the little holes in them. But Swiss cheese is a great name for them. We did put some pothos up top there just to be a little bit of a softener. And then there's another peperomia called Frost. A lot brighter silver leaf with green stripes, that green veining there. And a couple of ferns, these were here. These are Aryan ferns. There's some more in the back that are a little bit bigger and more full. I think that kind of sums up this display. Now you'll notice too that we utilized every last inch of light in this, in this building because this building has been here since before 1923. Andrew Seed moved into this building. They started in 1919, just up the road, moved into this building in 23 and it has been kind of built onto throughout the years, but uh, a lot of it's dark. There's not a whole lot of natural light that comes in here. That's why when we do a display in the windows, which will pop out maybe at the end and show you what the snowflakes look like, because I never, I don't think I ever showed you an end result of what it looks like. Anyway, we'd never back the displays with anything solid because we need every inch of natural light that we can get in here. Uh, but we do put a lot of hanging plants when we have excess up here. You'll notice on the windowsill, there are a lot of anthuriums. So a lot of four inch size and six inch size tucked in and around different colors, a whole bunch of Hoyas. So we've got Hoya tricolor right here. You can see the pink new growth, pink stems, creamy white, and then the nice soft green. There's a couple more varieties in this window, I think. Yeah, this is pubic calyx splash right here. Narrower leaf, silver kind of spotty variegation there, but it's different. See, this one has a full variegated leaf. This one is only about half. This side is more, I don't know, it's just really neat to really look at plants and see how different leaves can be just with, even within the same plant. I don't think there are any other varieties in this particular window, but there are in the next one. So let's head over to the side room. As we go in here, you can see the pink. I think this was blue. 
last when I displayed here for Christmas. It was blue. My mom usually likes to go through and paint a few little areas, different colors every spring uh, or winter going into spring just to make it bright and different. But it's so pretty for things like this. This is a peperomia called Jenny. It has pink in it, so it's beautiful for this spot. Thick leaves, pink margins, creamy white, sage green. We have one of these in our great room, a couple of them that are doing great. Very indirect light, and then it's about quadrupled in size since last, maybe it, have I had it for a year, maybe a little over a year. You can see the blooms are starting to form here. Three of them. Down on the floor here, there's Diffenbachia, but this is where I wanted to show you the Ornata Calatheas. Look at these, all grouped together like this. So beautiful, so perfect up against this pink area. The Rex begonias look great here as well. Just a really soft look. And you'll see little four inch plants tucked in everywhere. So this is a pothos called Enjoy. We have some larger ones in the back. Beautiful, healthy plants. As plants go and find new homes, we start moving things out of areas like this that don't get as much light and move them into more bright locations. So it's a constant shift, you know, trying to keep the plants as happy as possible. The rest of this display here, there's a philodendron called Cordatum. Just, it's kind of like a standard philodendron to me. Uh, this is a ficus called, T I don't know how to pronounce it, but Tinique, is it T-I-N-E-K-E, -E? Tineke maybe? And in between those, there's a Hoya called Hindu Rope. These have a really unique look to them, really tight, curly leaves. I think this would be really cool in a head planter. I have the, the donkey's tail sedum in my David head planter right now, but this one would look really neat in that too. Uh, up here, we've got pothos lining the top, just softening that. There's just other things just tucked in. There's philodendron here, more of the Hindu ropoya, Ginny peperomia. Basically, wherever we can find a spot that the plant will fit is where they go when we get a load in that big. Uh, and then here we've got some different things. So there's a fatsia, fatsia called a spider web. Isn't that neat? Beautiful leaf. Great looking crotons. These are ones, uh, crotons are plants that we inspect pretty thoroughly. In our area, they tend to want to harbor spider mites, and these are just clean as a whistle. They look so good, and they're so big, full of color. Peace lilies that look amazing. There are some others I'll show you that have blooms, but look at how huge this plant is. Huge and healthy. Oh, you know, a lot of times you'll see this type of plant with a ton of burn tips from like the wrong kind of water being used. They'll have burn tips or not enough humidity. These are just absolutely beautiful and perfect. There's a couple of different calatheas. These were here. I'm not even sure what variety they are. They were here from the last load. And as we move this way, more of the Teneki, I'll just call them ficus. And then this is a Rufabarba calathea. So there's a lot of calatheas we'll look at today. All of them are very different. This one has a much taller, more vase shape appearance, really fuzzy. You can kind of see the fuzz. Fuzzy red stems that, oops, sorry, that go up to fuzzy red back of leaves here, really soft like velvety. And then they've got a really pretty crinkly kind of wavy appearance on top. More philodendron right here. There's Aaron's sweatshirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> good good uh, placement right there, Erin. Um, this is a Benjamina ficus right here, kind of a standard ficus. It'll do really well right here by this door. This door faces north, but it still allows a lot of light to come in. Uh, there is black coral, right? Yeah, black coral Sansevieria. Quite a number of these over here in this corner. Sansevieria are one of those plants, if you're a beginner, Sansevieria or ZZ plants, which I'll show you in the back, are the best to start with. In this area here, more of the black coral. Uh, there's some uh, Hoyas, more of the Dracaenas, another variety of Diffenbachia. Look at the variegation on this one, so pretty. Mm. And then this is a Photonia called Red. These like quite a bit of water. So like for this type of plant at my house, I would have to display it right next to a sink somewhere. Otherwise it wouldn't get enough water. Uh, my houseplants have to survive like they have to be survivors. <laughs> and those that need a lot of water need to be right on my windowsill because that's the only time I'll think about them. Um, look at this. Now, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is this Karai Hoya? These are really popular. We also got them in little four inch containers just to start like a leaf or two in one container that have just rooted. 
but this one's already being trained up onto a steak, looking absolutely perfect. Um, up here, just kind of a repeat of some of the other things we've already looked at. Really nice, healthy looking plants. You'll see in this window, we've got a few more varieties of Hoya. So this one is called Obavada. It's got bigger, rounded leaves. All these Hoyas are so cool. But look at the difference here. This is a Hoya too. This is a Curt Curtisai, yeah, Curtisai Hoya. Look at this. <laughs> look how different. Really beautiful. And then we've got, let's see, we looked at the, did we look at a Crimson Princess? I don't think we did. So that's a Crimson Princess right there. Kind of some pink in the stems. Creamy white variegation there. There's also some string of pearls in this window right here. Look really great. And on the window sill down there. And I think other than this massive Hoya, we've just got some repeat varieties here. Look at this huge plant. Beautiful pink new growth here. Okay, I think we're gonna head toward the tool wall. I think we covered all of this. We covered this, this. Yep, so this is the next direction, starting right here. So more Congo Rojo philodendrons, these are the smaller size. Right here, we looked at those bigger ones up front. And then areca palms, look really good. These are another one that we really have to inspect for uh, insects, and nothing, super clean. I just love it when we get loads like that. Uh, this is gorgeous. If you just stand back and take a look at it, this arbor here has been here for a while. It's a great place to uh, display bird feeders and things like that. Right now, kangaroo paw ferns, that's what this one is here. Look at the bottom. I don't know if you can see this, but look at all of these. I don't even know what they call them. They're like where they want to root, right? So rhizomes, just intense. These are a neon philodendron right here bright chartreuse that's a perfect plant to put over here because it's so much darker in this area this is one of the first areas this and one other i'll show you that we clear out first as other things go uh, we move stuff from this area because there's just no natural i mean the window's way up there you're really not going to receive much light that's good enough for the plants in this area and then the sunroom is back to my right oh oh birkin philodendrons don't these look beautiful i think i might I might need like this particular one, maybe. I love the look of these, that white variegation and the new leaves that have a ton of white in them. I had a Birkin philodendron that I had up in our front sun porch and I forgot that I had some plants in there and it got cold one night and I didn't have my floor heater running, forgot to turn it on. And I tried to save it the next day. I went and got it and put it in our studio and it just has continually dropped leaves and it's just down to nothing. It's got like the little main stem with uh, one little leaf that looks like it might be a new leaf, but I don't know, I think it's gone. So time to refresh that. Uh, ferns here in a really cool, I was just noticing this today, this box for wood with the fireplace tools. It's kind of neat. Uh, what variety of fern is this? Anything particular? I don't want to make a mess here. This is a Kimberly Queen. Beautiful. They tend to uh, resent being moved inside in our area. So if you've got, I tend to do best with mine in a window that faces south actually. I have it in a, a stand that holds water and I just keep it in water all the time. And it seems to keep it semi-happy. Beautiful, huge, more of the Benjamina ficus here. These are nice and big. And I'm just noticing the other spathophyllum or peace lilies. Look at this, so six inch size right here with blooms. Oh, they're just so big and gorgeous. Opening the boxes with all the house plants in them was so fun um, because we didn't really know. Like, well, I didn't make the order, so I had no idea what was gonna show up. I just showed up in the morning and started opening, you know, helping unload the racks and opening boxes. So it was really a surprise every time we opened a box and oh, it's fun to see all that fresh growth this time of year. Uh, this corner here, I hadn't really looked at. So what do we got? Uh, Tradescantia called Nanook, Nan Nanook. Look at how pretty that is. Wouldn't that be beautiful in an outdoor shade planter? I think it would be. Put it with some impatience and some other things, really beautiful. More of the Audrey ficus here. More of the peace lilies right there. 
Sorry, I'm making Aaron have to kind of step over himself to get around here. Uh, Ralias, right here. Are these like a Ming or a Fabian? They don't have a tag, but Ming, am I right there? These are on, they're kind of like bonsai, almost looking on the stump. They're really neat. I've never had really great luck with Aurelia. Like I haven't found uh, the magic spot for them yet in our house. I'll keep trying. More Dracaenas, these are four inch side here. Four inch size, did I say side? Marginata cane. So these are up on a little bit of a trunk there and then really nicely branched. Beautiful plant. Now this is the Philodendron Little Hope. I think I'm gonna take a couple of these today for our mantle possibly. Look at how beautiful those are. They're such a pleasing shape too. So a little bit different than the Zandus up front. These are a bigger leaf. The ruffle or the, the um, I don't know if they call it serration or whatever. Anyway, the leaves are more deeply lobed. I think that's what you call it. Um, but really just gorgeous and full. And the moment I saw these come out, because I unpacked most of these, um, when I saw these come out, I just thought, oh, these are so perfect. Uh, so that's basically what's in here. There are some Peperomia frost up there, bigger size than the ones we saw up front. Let's tackle this display right here. So these are a Peperomia called green bean right here. Those are interesting looking. Peperomiums are so nice because you just, they're kind of like an in-between between a regular house plant and a succulent to me. Um, I usually water mine fairly regularly, but they don't need it as often as other things. So they're just a really nice, easy care as long as you have a bright spot. Some four inch crotons here. This is a Chinese evergreen called Tigris, Aglaonema. I don't know how to say that, but let me show you the leaf variegation here. Beautiful. Kind of like a Diffenbachia in variegation a little bit. Down below there's Euphorbia called Caput, Caput Medusa. They look like pine cones almost, don't they? Like down here, they look like a really tight new pine cone. This would also be very cool in a head planter. And then right over here, ZZ plant. So this is another one of the ones that are really great for those of you guys who are beginners or just don't really like to have high maintenance anything in your house. These are the opposite of high maintenance. If you're a type who travels a lot for work or you know, whatever, these are perfect. They can take really low light, very low water, a lot of abuse, really amazing plant. And then right here is another type of alocasia. So this one's called pink dragon, pink stems. Aren't those so pretty, that, that delicate pink. And then the leaves, as opposed to like the bambino that we looked at up front, these aren't as lobed and uh, they are much lighter green with kind of a silver vein just a softer appearance here. And then if we swing back around this way, you'll see a bunch of split leaf philodendrons right here, a bunch of them. They're pretty good size for a six inch plant. Look at that. Here is another aglaonema called Silver Bay. So it's got a lot more silver in the center, a lot lighter color than the last one we looked at. And then this is a calathea here called Wur, Warsawissi. <laughs> Why are names so hard to freaking pronounce? They need to have different ones. Like this should just be a W Calathea. W, easy. It's pretty though. Like this is what it's about, not the names, right? Look at the plants, so pretty. Purple undersides of the leaves. Yes. Right here, Crotons. These have a really neat variegation on them. This is called Gold Dust. I remember my sister saying, oh, I need to take one of those home. She has one that's done really well for her. Um, so she's thinking she maybe needed another one. Uh, this is a Dracaena. Is this like a Janet Craig Dracaena or something like that? Anyway, these are really, really tough plants. I have one of these at home and it does really well. There's the lemon button ferns right here. Have a really kind of wispy look appearance to them. Brazil philodendron, snow queen pothos up here. Aren't these so pretty? So they're a little bit um, 
like the, versus the enjoy that we looked at up front, which we'll see more of somewhere back here. It, they, the leaves are a little bit more open and a little less thick, I think. Um, they appear a little bit more delicate. A lot of white in there. There's some Crassula Argentin, Argentina, Argentia. So a jade plant right there. A few of those and bromeliads. I love this one right here. This is a pothos called Silver Picta, Picta Satin. They have silver margin. Silver margin around the leaf, silver variegation. They just have a very uh, unique look to them and the birds are just going nuts today. My goodness. So we had three bird cages in here uh, and with some rescue birds and they all actually integrated together in this big bird cage eventually. I think they had them in there long enough to like close and close proximity. They all got used to each other and now they're all very happy in there. A uh, butterfly plant on a pole right here. And then more of the Schefflera. These are smaller and I love these. These are a watermelon peperomia. Oh, mini watermelon. Aren't those so pretty? The striping is just gorgeous. I'd have to just have like a peperomia collection. I think that's a good idea. Yes. Uh, more Snow Queen Pothos uh, here. This one though, is this a Snow Queen? No, this is a Golden Pothos. So little flecks of gold variegation in there. I think that that kind of, oh, there's more Aurelias here. And these are the Fabian. So the other ones were Ming. Fabian stump Aurelias. So really unique looking. Kind of like bonsai looking. I gotta make sure the leaves are away from the birds. They will pull them right through and try to eat them. Okay, right down here, Maranta plants, lemon lime Maranta. These, I've also not found like the special spot for these to keep them really happy in my house, but they are the, they are so unique in their leaf pattern. Look at that. It looks like little, like little um, shadows of smaller leaves and then the yellow cream variegation that goes up. Oh, they're so pretty. Uh, these are some just combination planters that were here. There's some Sansevierias in this one. String of bananas it looks like with the Jenny Peperomia. Uh, there's a great big fern up there. Money tree right here, braided. Let me pull this out so we can see it. That's a beautiful braid right there. These are really interesting plants. My mom has a huge one in her office. It's massive. Been there for a while. Uh, around the back side of this display, another variety of Calathea here. This one is called Orbifolia. Whoops. Orbifolia, I think, is a good name. Orb. These are very circle shaped, much, much more circle than the other Calatheas we've been looking at, and much softer. Soft green, kind of a darker green, and then the silver. Huge aloe plant right here, massive. And I think other than a couple ferns that kind of wraps up that display. These are also Kimberly Queens right here. Yeah, there was some confusion on the order form with the ficus and, and variety name because some of them didn't arrive with tags and some of them did, uh, but there was enough of them without tags that we couldn't really figure out. But I think we decided this one is Decora Burgundy or close that's as close as we could get, but very beautiful variegation on these. These are a little different than the Tenekis up front in that these have a lot of pink in them and very creamy colored variegation here. Uh, right over here is a gorgeous Sansevieria called Golden Flame. Have you ever seen such a plant? These are so interesting. They, are, they have like an agave or a mangave sort of uh, growth habit, but so easy to take care of and that they don't need as much light as an agave or a mangave. I really love that. And then there's another Sansevieria called Moonshine. So much more silver in color. Here's some of the enjoys, the big ones. Enjoy pothos, draping down. More moonshines here. And then Erin, I think we're gonna have to turn around here and we'll look at the back little display and then we'll head up to the sun area. So more of the Marantas and the braided money trees here, four inch piece lilies, so the spathophyllums, a lot of them have blooms about ready to open up. Look at all the enjoys back here. I actually took a couple of these bunny planters home because they are so cute. I thought it'd be fun to 
pot a little like primrose or something and put it in a bathroom around Easter time. And nothing back here. I mean, we just had plants everywhere. They were scattered in piles all around this area. The floor was a complete mess. That, yep, that wraps up that display. Oh, just looking over the whole thing, like seeing all of the pothos hanging and then all the other beautiful plants. There's um, some, what is this? Lipstick plants here and more Brazil philodendrons up on the left side there. Again, those will move forward as we have more space. String of bananas, maybe. Uh, more Sansevierias. This is a Laurenti Sansevieria, a mixed planter, some great big aloes. This is an, a, a mangave called Pineapple Express. Beautiful color. You can see kind of the spots here. And I wonder if they, the spots kind of brighten in different temperatures. Sometimes when it gets a little cooler, the colors will intensify. Smaller Orbifolia, Calathea is there. And then this is a Sansevieria called Twisted Sister. <laughs> so shorter, stubbier leaves, and then that twisted kind of nature uh, growth habit, really pretty. More Ficus burgundy. Peperomia, watermelon, but the big watermelon. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And then, like I said up front, when we were up there looking at the bigger Hoya, there's a whole bunch of starts back here as well. Kind of nice that you can get them in whatever kind of growth stage you want. Cause some people like budget wise, this is an expensive plant, this type of Hoya. Um, so some people want to start with this size and some people just want to start just for the joy of watching it grow instead of starting with one already big. I mean, everybody's different that way. Uh, these are Arian ferns right here, huge and gorgeous. This is a curly lipstick plant right here that's got beautiful bright red blooms. This one I'm on the fence about. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I don't know if I really like how curly the leaves are. I kind of feel like, should I water it? Did I hit it with an herbicide on accident? <laughs> I don't know. It might be one that needs to grow on me a little bit. Uh, more Sansevierias down here. This is a black jade, Hanai. This is a Superba Robusta. Oh, and there's Petra uh, Crotons up here. And then there are some spider plants. This is a Bonnie spider plant. So it's got a little bit more of a curly leaf. Oh, this is the Decora Burgundy, I think. I'm all messed up on the ficuses, you guys. This one, though, let me pull it out in the light. Look at how pretty the coloring is on this one. I don't have, I don't think, this particular color at home. So there's that. Might need one. Uh, there are some Pileas down here. Peppy, um, there you go, pepper, um, butter, butter, butter. cool looking leaves on those. These are easy care. Uh, there's a mixed variety of Sansevierias here, some really pretty silvery ones, one with more yellow, trying to hit both sides here. And then we move into more sun loving stuff. Uh, there are some string of hearts here, looking absolutely beautiful. Great big peperomia, great big nephthitis, butterfly plants, and a ton of succulents in this area. So, I mean, we can just start here and kind of scan the shelves. Uh, up here, there's a fatal attraction agave. So see, they're calling these peperomia nevada. These look a lot like the green bean peperomia up front. I don't know, they all have slightly different variations sometimes, and sometimes they can look similar, unless you really start looking at them. Uh, Haworthia zebras. These are a Sansevieria bons, yeah, Boncel. Round leaves, so cool looking. And then mixed succulent planters here, a red wing mangave. It's got some really beautiful color there. Look at that. Love that. Some little aloes here, and then some ferns tucked in. This spot doesn't get quite as much light. As we go up this one, we've got purple star lipstick plant, rickrack cactus. Might look familiar. Uh, we've got Jester's Crown Ferns there, little ZZ plants, but look at these things. They are just like almost needing a repot. They like to be fairly pot bound, but like this one, you can see the roots are pushing this pot out. Eventually they will crack it. And in fact, I might have a hard time getting this tag back down in here. There we go. Look at this fountain, you guys. If you didn't have it in here where there are other fountains making noise, it makes the most gentle water sound and it doesn't splash at all. 
It goes down into this little basin. Isn't that pretty? i to make sure the leaf doesn't wick the water away. Oh, Senecio here, more ZZ plants down there, a ton of peperomias here, dracaenas, ferns, just uh, more Burke and philodendrons, crassulas down there, more hoyas, mixed succulent. Like these are in like four inch containers, three big succulents in each one, and they're all different. Uh, more peperonias here, peperomias. A uh, goldfish plant called black gold. Ooh, this one has blooms on it. Let me take it out. This one's starting to bloom. Not pretty. Four inch diffenbachias. There are hanging plants all over the place here. String of hearts. This one's a string of, which one is this? Some of them look quite similar. Oh, string of bananas. A Dracaena called Warnecki compacta, right here. Pretty white variegation. There's the Burroughs Telcetum. And then look at this rack. I'm not gonna name all of these, but just if we could scan over all of those beautiful succulents. They're so pretty. Both are kind of the same, both racks, just full of succulents here. I'm gonna backtrack a tiny bit so that we can look at this rack here. And if you look up, there are pothos hanging everywhere in here. Every available hook is full. Shefflera, kangaroo paw ferns, cordelin glaucas right here. Green pothos, I mean golden rather, I'm sorry. Golden, it has gold in it. These are neat, these are a variegated Dyskidia. Right, is that how you say it? Dyskidia, Cascade variegata. Those are really pretty. Peperomia called Rana Verde. Peperomia Nevada. Crassulas down here. And what is this? Crassula avalata. I've not had one of those before. And then an evergreen clematis. So this came inside from outside wintering over, but look at the blooms. Do they have a scent? Let me smell them. Back it up, <laughs> let me smell them. Oh yeah, they smell yum. Beautiful. Uh, boy, more four inch things. There's coffee plants down here. Brazil philodendron, golden pothos, and uh, Kimberly queen ferns, a bunch of them in here. A bunch of different things here. Hoya australis right here. Kind of the classic green. Uh, there's more Dracaenas. There are a few different types of fern. There's the rabbit foot fern right here, which have the really fuzzy rhizome kind of stems that come out. Peperomia, more of the Rana Verde. Some philodendrons up there. I think those are four inch birk. Well, are these birkins? Yeah, just have less wet, white variegation on them at this point. And then there's some um, uh, kangaroo paw, four inch kangaroo paw ferns there. This fountain is really quite nice in that it makes a, a nice water sound. It does splatter, but very minimally, which is quite nice. I have put fountains in here that I regretted putting in here, like big, beautiful ones, but just splatter, like a two foot splatter all the way around it. So you have to be really careful on what kind of uh, water features you put inside. Here are um, some more of the leprechaun and glenema. Picked a satin. And then, boy, this kind of almost wraps it up. There's a few ferns over here. These are just kind of a mixed four inch fern. I don't think that they put actual variety names, but isn't that a beauty? That's absolutely gorgeous. There's some little mini staghorns. Look at how cute. There's a whole tray of them. And then this is the Alocasia polydwarf is what this one is called. So this looks a lot like the Bambino, but much bigger leaves. Look how beautiful that is. Really deep purple on the backside. I think that does it for plants. I don't think I actually missed, I don't think I missed any displays. So let's pop out onto the front sidewalk and take a look at the snowflakes real quick. So we're standing on the opposite side of the street so you can see a really backed up look at the windows uh, and you can really see those snowflakes stand out. But do you even see the plants? I can't even see them unless the sun is shining. It's such a weird window space, which I have explained before. Even though we get the full afternoon sun on this side of the building, 
uh, you have to use really bright colors, otherwise you just can't see what's in those windows. And I think that those paper snowflakes turned out really pretty and bright and just simple uh, for the month of January. So anyway, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you for walking around with me. It's so much fun just to show off beautiful things like that. So now I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna get a box. I'm gonna gather up a few things for home. Hope you guys are all having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.